In the wild, wild west days, Dodge City days of the western American frontier, we had tremendous problems up until really the early 1900s uh, with the banking system because a bank was basically a storage place for money. You took your money in, and when you put money in a savings account in a bank, you were depending upon that bank to not steal it, to not mismanage and not go broke. And if they loaned out all the money and nobody repaid the loans, the bank went under, and all of the deposits were gone. They were loaned out in the form of loans, and people lost everything that they put in a bank. And so uh, if, if, the, if there was ever a question of the solvency of the bank, a question of the way the bank was being run, there would be a run on the bank. And people would run in and get their money out because they knew there was some money in there. And if they got theirs out, it didn't matter because somebody wasn't going to get their money if the bank collapsed. And, of course, a run on the bank pretty much ensured that the bank collapsed. If you remember, it's a wonderful life. There was a run on the bank in the in the in the old black and white movie from Christmas time movies, right? And that was on the uh, savings and loan, or the bank and lo or the uh, lending and loan, or whatever they called that particular one. But it was the same concept. And um, of course, we ran into the same thing uh, heading up into the Great Depression, and uh, the government decided to stabilize our our banking system to form the FDIC. And so uh, banks have to pay into the insurance fund to ensure that one of, when one of the member banks fails, that the depositors are covered. And so there's not runs, uh, there's no longer a run on the bank. But if you put money in a bank in a foreign country, you don't have that. Uh, unless that foreign country has some kind of a banking system that's, uh, or insurance system that ensures the stability of that lender or that uh, exchange and if you put money in a foreign currency meaning if you buy the foreign currency if you use your dollars to buy euros or your dollars to buy yen or your dollars to buy whatever other currency there is the peso whatever whatever it is then what you are doing is you're saying that you're you're going to play the field you're going to speculate that that currency is going to become more valuable than the dollar, than the American dollar. You're betting, if you say put the money in pesos, you're saying, okay, those pesos are going to be, they're going to uh, buy more than dollars will buy in the future. And so if I put $2 into pesos today, later I can take the same number of pesos and cash them out for $10. And that's trading in currency is what you're doing. And so you're, you're buying the yen, or you're buying the peso, or you're buying the euro, or whatever, and you're betting, really, uh, when you're doing that, you're speculating, gambling, in a very real sense, against the American dollar. Because there's no rhyme or reason for this, because all of a sudden, uh, a government can decide to flood its currency. And in America, they always, we always call that quantitative easing, where we just dump currency into the market, and it makes the dollar, it dilutes the value of the dollar. And when they do that, and they try to do it at a pace that doesn't create big ripples, but other countries are, are not nearly as sophisticated, and so they can destroy the value of a currency. A currency only has value to the extent that someone else wants it. So, for instance, in my bookshelf in my office, I have some paper money in there with Saddam Hussein's face on it. No one wants that money except as a keepsake, a souvenir. But I can't take that to the gas station and buy gas. I can't pay my water bill with that. And even if I were in Iraq, I couldn't trade it for a meal. No one would want the Saddam Hussein paper money. It has no value. It has lost its currency. <laughs> it has lost its value because no one else will trade for it. It never really had any value. It was paper. The only value it has is, that, is the promise that someone else will trade for it, legal tender. And so we carry green paper around in America, and we say, that's money. But it, it's really only money because someone else will take it. 
And so that's why the Iraqi dinar, it, it, these people running around buying the Iraqi dinar, is such a stupid idea. And it's such a scam. Not because I think Iraq is bad or not because I'm politically mad about this. There's none of that. It's a simple economic fact. You have a war-torn country with an unstable government, and you're buying their currency. This would be stupid. You're going to lose your butt. And so today it comes out that one of the big exchange companies for uh, Bitcoin has crashed. And so Bitcoin is very unstable at the moment and looking like it's not going to make it. And what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a currency on the Internet. It has no value except to the extent someone else will take it from you as value. Just like that paper has no value except the extent someone else will take it. So Bitcoin is the Iraqi dinar of the Internet. And I know intelligent people who, while they're intelligent, are not wise, that have put a bunch of money in Bitcoin. But it's a really good way to turn a million dollars into nothing, to play in unstable currencies. That they're, and, and here's what you have. Let me tell you what Bitcoin is. It's WWW. It's the wild, wild west. You're back to the Western banking system. Because all of a sudden, one of these computer nerds just flips the switch. The whole freaking thing's gone. It has no value. They just got completely ripped off and it took them down. And so the uh, little hipster techie guys are sitting in front of the building with a sign that says, where's my money? Well, honey, you never had any. It's not real money. Because it's not got it's not a stable currency that has any kind of a system that backs it, that has any kind of a system that protects. Well, I've made a lot of money in Bitcoin. You can make a lot of money trading dirt to somebody else trading dirt until people catch on that dirt's not a good idea to trade. You can trade gravel out of your driveway as long as you can get away with it. And so just because you made some money doing it doesn't mean that it was a bright idea. And and so I'll go ahead and, you know, I got all you Iraqi dinar people and all you gold people all pissed off at me. So let's just go ahead and add you Bitcoin people to the mix. You're stupid. You're going to lose your money. Be pissed at me. You shouldn't have put money in something wacko like that. People, money and handling your personal investments is not difficult. You put it in things that are tried and true, that have been around forever. You don't have to risk your dadgum life fortune in some made up computer game. And that's basically what you're doing here. No backing. It's the wild, wild west. It's going to turn on its head, and you're going to lose your butt. This is the Dave Ramsey Show.